Hi, and welcome to this episode on Azure Databricks. In the previous episode, I demonstrated how to provision and analyze Azure SQL database table in the Databricks notebook. I'm going to put a link of the video in the description box below so they can watch and see how to do that. So in tonight's episode, I'm going to show you how to use Databricks Notebook to read multiple CSV files resident in Fabric Lakehouse, leveraging the Azure Block File System Secure Protocol, the ABFSS protocol. And I'm going to also show you how to write the data from the Databricks Notebook to Fabric Lakehouse as a Delta table. Without much talking, let's get started. First, we want to take a look at the source data on my local machine. I'm going to come to this file, which is the CSV file I used in the last video. So we have the sales 2025, which is this column, the order date year to the sales column. And I'm going to come to this folder that contains the sales 2015 to 2025. So we want to come to the browser. And this is my demo 101 Databricks workspace. So we want to create a lake house item. So click on this name item. And I'm going to set for lake house and then click on that. I'm going to call this one transaction data demo and then click on create. This has been created. So we can see we have the tables and files with no content. So we want to create one of the files, a subfolder, and then load some of the CSV files. I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then I want to create a new folder, subfolder, and I'm going to call this one sales data. You can use whatever you like and then click on create. So this has been created. So I can click on that. I can use this get data and upload the files. I can even click on this ellipsis here and upload the files. So I'm going to browse through my local machine and I want to just import or upload the 2020 to 2025 CSV files and then click on upload and this has been uploaded. I can close this upload files tab for now and you can see the content. We can even preview by clicking on the 2020 and then we have the order date to the sales column and that's awesome. I can click back on this. So we want to go to the database now in this environment we're going to create our compute and in my case i've created this cornerstone cluster and which is all purpose compute now to create this we're going to click on the create compute and then we can specify the policy such as the all restricted or personal compute you can even choose how many nodes you need based on the workload so in my case i use the single node and then this is going to be using pontoon acceleration and very importantly we're going to scroll down and then come to the advanced and then we're going to enable the credential pass through for user level data access it's going to allow the databricks to access the one leg the fabric so as soon as you click on this this is going to automatically take out the unity catalog so this doesn't support unity catalog so once you down click on create so in my case i've created this compute cornerstone cluster so i'm going to create a notebook and then click on that in the notebook, I'm going to just paste this code and explain. So, by spark.sql, we want to import functions as f, and I'm going to need this for my group by calculation in a moment. And then I've got this one leg path. So, I need to fetch the ABFSS path. So, come back to the one leg, and then I want to click on this ellipsis for the files, go to the properties, and then I'm going to copy this and go back to the notebook and in between this double code control v to paste and uh, because i'm going to be using this path one leg path as my read and write method so i'm going to come here and get rid of these files and take it out so we are going to have this df equals spark dot read dot format and this is going to be dot in inside double quotes csv files because our data contains csv files so we're going to have the option and specify the header equals true because truly our data contain headers. We can see the order date, year, month, and so on here. And then we have the dot load functions. We are loading from this my one link that is holding this ABFSS protocol path plus. And I'm going to specify the source. This is going to be files forward slash. And then I'm going to provide the name of the sales data as the subfolder. So I'm going to type in sales data and I'm going to make sure that it is correctly typed sales data. And I'm going to use the display function to display the data frame. So this, of course, connected to my cornerstone cluster. This is really important. I can control enter to run the code. 
awesome so we are able to successfully read the data from the fabric leak house into the databricks notebook so we can see we have the order date year month region to the sales column the same number of columns we have in the source cool now i can click on this to even see more details such as the name of the columns now this contains string but i'm not going to be covering this changing of the data types in this video so we can see the name of the columns so i'm going to scroll down now, I'm going to perform a simple group by calculation here. I'm going to use this df.group by function. So, I'm going to be grouping by the year column, which is this column here. And then we have the dot aggregate. And then we have the f, which is the alias in the library we imported at the top. And then we're going to be using the sum function on top of the sales column here. And then I'm going to alias the sales column output as the total sales. And I'm going to have the sum of units as the total quantity quantity and then we're going to use the dot show method to show this result so control enter to run the code and let's see the result okay cool so we have this done so i can click on this job 55 to see the content and this is what i love so i can see more details we have the status has succeeded and we have the date submitted duration and then we have the associated sql query and so on and so forth so i can close this for now so this is the total sales total quantity for the year 2020 to 2025 which is cool so we want to go down and then write the entire data frame not this result of course we can write this result if we choose to but we want to actually read all of these files this df itself as a delta table in our fabric leak house so i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to use this code so we have the df.write.mode and then we're going to do override if it exists dot format this is going to be form of a delta table and then we have the dot save so this is going to also be saving to the my one leg path that we define at the top and then this is going to be in form of a delta table so i'm going to type in tables yeah now don't forget in here we use the files because it's actually coming from the files here which is this files but we are actually writing now into this sales this table so i'm going to scroll down and use tables there and then forward slash and i'm going to provide the name of the table i'm going to call this one data you can use whatever you like and then control enter to run the code and let's see the results all right so we can see we have the spark jobs and then we have two so i can click on this it has grown to four and i can see all the details i can even expand the 61 for example and let's see so we have the details succeeded and so on and so forth. We can see the stages and then we can go to the storage, we can go to the environment. Anyway, this is another talk for another day. So I'm not going to cover this in detail for now. So this succeeded. Now let's go back to the one leg that is the fabric leak house. I'm going to click on this ellipses and then I can refresh. So as soon as I refresh, let's say we have the data as a delta table and i can see the columns so this is how we can read from the one leg and then write into the one leg using the databricks notebook i trust you enjoyed this video if you do like share comment and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now